$1.1 million. That is what MARTA is investing to make new use of their old train cars. New York City has one of the oldest subway systems in the entire United States of America. The subway first started operating way back in 1904, which was a really long time ago. It is also one of the busiest subway networks in all of North America. Each year, the subway transports an incredible number of people around NYC. In the calendar year 2023 alone, it is estimated that over 2 billion individuals use the subway trains to travel to work, school, shopping, or for fun activities. To put that enormous figure into context, if you counted from 1 to 2 billion, it would take you well over 6 years without stopping. Moving around such a colossal volume of humans is no simple feat. New York City has a very large population packed into a relatively compact area. Over 8 million people call NYC home, and the five boroughs it comprises, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx and Staten Island, cover just 305 square miles total. That works out to over 26,000 residents squeezed into each square mile on average. With so many individuals living in such a confined space, the city requires a transportation option that can transport huge crowds efficiently. That's where the subway comes in. It acts as the crucial arteries keeping the heart of the metropolis pumping. On a daily basis, the subway whisks millions of New Yorkers around the concrete jungle in its iconic trains. Without the subway, the Big Apple streets would be hopelessly jammed with traffic. Instead, the underground system moves throngs of people at a brisk pace. After many decades of faithful service, subway cars eventually reach the end of the line. Much like vehicles, heavy use takes its toll on trains over the lengthy passage of time. When carriages can no longer safely and reliably transport passengers, the MTA must retire them from active service. But removing the old trains from circulation was only half the challenge. The MTA also faced the significant question of what to do with a massive stockpile of worn-out wagons. Simply scrapping them wasn't practical or environmentally friendly. It was then that experts came up with the innovative idea of reusing the retired rapid transit rolling stock in an unexpected locale, underwater. In the early 1990s, a visionary environmentalist named Jack Moyer proposed transforming the sturdy subway car skeletons into artificial coral reefs. He recognized the durable frames would make excellent artificial habitats for ocean-dwelling creatures if submerged in the sea. After considerable discussion, the MTA and government agencies embraced this novel concept in the late 90s. Beginning in 2001, a large-scale operation commenced to deliberately sink old subway cars along America's eastern seaboard. Using barges, the trains were transported from New York Harbor out into the Atlantic Ocean. Specialists first carefully stripped hazardous substances from the vehicles to protect marine life. Only the bare metal bodies remained. In total, over 2,500 rail cars were purposely placed on the ocean floor off the coasts of New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, South Carolina, and Georgia. The cars were carefully positioned in specific target locations chosen by scientists. In what was once empty seafloor, the sunken subway trains would soon become bustling artificial reef ecosystems. With the subway cars now on the bottom of the sea, it was time to see if Jack Moyer's ambitious plan would work. Would marine organisms truly utilize the artificial structures as artificial habitats? The results were astonishing, even exceeding expectations. A wide variety of ocean life soon called the sunken trains home. Fish of all types from small minnows to huge bass were some of the earliest residents. They took shelter inside the carriages and used them as shelter from predators. Over time, crustaceans also colonized the metal frameworks. Lobsters, crabs and shrimp crawled throughout nooks and crannies. Additionally, mollusks moved in en masse. Mussels attached themselves to rail car surfaces forming dense beds. Snails and clams dug into sand that accumulated. Perhaps most impressive of all were the colorful corals. Slowly but surely, Vibrant anemones and corals transformed portions of cars into vibrant reefs. The drab steel evolved into kaleidoscopes of reds, oranges, and pinks. As more creatures settled, the artificial habitats grew richer and more diverse. Communities of worms joined the throng. Jellyfish drifted through open areas. Schools of small fish schooled around structures, protected from dangers in the open water. Their numbers attracted larger predators like grouper and shark to feed. Within five years, the artificial reef effect was self-evident. Barren seafloor was reborn as veritable oases. Scientists monitoring the sites were amazed by the speed of colonization. 
where once only sand lay, now flourished intricate ecosystems. The artificial structures proved to be perfect substitutes for depleted natural reefs. By acting as three-dimensional matrices, subway car reefs mimicked nature's architecture. While the sunken subway cars had undeniably become thriving new habitats, some concerns remained about potential downsides. Would these artificial reefs crafted from former transit wagons truly integrate sustainably into the delicate ocean environment over the decades? Some experts voiced cautious reservations. One issue surrounded the car's steel composition. Stainless steel resists corrosion better than other alloys but is not impervious indefinitely. Depending on water conditions like acidity, steel parts might corrode faster than anticipated, eventually collapsing structures. Water chemistry varies at each deposition site along the eastern seaboard too. More northerly areas experience rougher winters with icier waters that could accelerate wear. Additionally, there was the remote possibility contaminants could leach from degraded metal over time. Despite thorough cleansing beforehand, trace elements may remain. These potential toxins posed hypothetical risk if released in significant amounts. Some small contaminant discharge during corrosion process couldn't be excluded. However, most scientists estimated any pollution would likely be negligible and safely dispersed. Nonetheless, a few ecologists argued for more long-term monitoring to verify impacts stayed minimal. Continuous sampling of habitats and surrounding areas were recommended to catch any problems early. Some car parts should also be periodically inspected for excessive corrosion. Remediation could be considered, such as partial car removal, if remote issue ever materialized far in the future. However, most experts viewed these concerns as relatively low-level theoretical risks rather than substantial threats. The benefits of artificial reefs for fisheries and biodiversity far outweighed hypothetical issues. With proactive checks, any developing problems could be addressed promptly before serious effects occurred. Overall, most were confident that with time, the sunken subway car reefs would prove a successful example of adaptive reuse and habitat restoration. Across the pond from New York City lies another massive metropolis with an extensive underground railway, London, England. For over 150 years, the iconic London Underground, also called the Tube, has transported millions of residents and visitors around the British capital on a daily basis. However, after decades of service the oldest trains inevitably reach the end of the line. Beginning in 2008, London followed in New York's innovative footsteps by finding a novel way to reuse their retired subway cars. Over a six-year period from 2008 to 2013, more than 150 worn-out underground trains were deliberately sunk into coastal waters off the coast of the United Kingdom. But they weren't discarded, instead, they were given new purpose as artificial coral reefs underwater. Just as in New York, the train carriages were first stripped of any hazardous materials that could pollute the marine environment. Only the bare steel frames remained. Then using specialized barges, the subway cars were transported from London out into the Irish Sea and North Sea near England, Scotland and Wales. There, scientists and government agencies carefully positioned the vehicles on selected patches of seabed. Before long, ocean life began to colonize the sunken subway structures. Fish of all types soon called the artificial habitats home. Within years, crustaceans such as crabs also moved in and took up residence. Perhaps most remarkably, vibrant anemones and coral polyps transformed portions of cars into vibrant reefs through their vibrant colors and textures. The artificial reefs swiftly became thriving ecosystems comparable to natural reefs. Today, the coral gardens crafted from over 150 retired tube trains are flourishing underwater destinations. They've helped restore depleted seabed areas while sustaining fisheries. Across the seas from London lies another massive Asian metropolis with an extensive subway system, Tokyo, Japan. For decades, the Tokyo Metro has efficiently transported huge crowds around the dense urban center using electric trains. However, after many years of heavy usage, trains eventually grow old and need replacement. Beginning in 2002, Tokyo took inspiration from the creative reuse programs in New York and London. Working with local fishermen's associations, the Tokyo Metro began deliberately sinking their retired subway cars to form artificial reefs. Over the course of many years, more than 300 worn-out trains were purposely submerged near various islands in Japanese waters. Then using specialized vessels, the retired trains were transported out to predetermined coastal areas. There, with guidance from environmental experts, the vehicles were carefully placed upon sections of seabed selected as suitable sites. 
It did not take long for marine life to discover these new artificial structures. Within a few short years, crustaceans, vibrant sea anemones, sponges and coral polyps slowly transformed parts of the metallic reefs with their colors and textures. Today, over a decade and a half later, the artificial coral gardens crafted from Tokyo's retired subway cars flourish underwater. They've aided restoration of depleted ocean areas while supporting local fishing industries. Across the ocean from Tokyo lies another massive coastal metropolis with an important subway network. Sao Paulo, Brazil. For decades, the Sao Paulo Metro has transported huge crowds around Latin America's largest city using electric trains rumbling through tunnels below the streets. However, after many years of service carrying millions of riders, trains eventually grow old and need replacement. Beginning in 2006, Sao Paulo took inspiration from the innovative programs in New York, London, and Tokyo of creatively reusing old subway cars. Working with environmental agencies, the Compania do Metropolitano de Sao Paulo started deliberately sinking their retired trains to form artificial reefs off the coast of Sao Paulo State. Over many years, more than 150 worn-out carriages were purposefully submerged near the shoreline. Just as the other cities had done, the subway cars were first stripped of any potentially hazardous materials that could endanger marine life. Only the bare metal frames remained. Then using specialized boats, the retired trains were transported out to predetermined nearshore areas. There, with guidance from biologists, the vehicles were carefully arranged upon sections of seabed selected as suitable sites. Fish rapidly colonized the sunken subway networks, finding shelter and foraging opportunities galore. Today, over 15 years later, the artificial coral gardens crafted from Sao Paulo's retired subway cars flourish underwater. Across North America from the cities of the eastern seaboard lies Seattle, Washington, a bustling port metropolis renowned for its natural beauty. For decades, Sound Transit has helped shuttle residents around the metro area using an expanding light rail network. As with other cities' subway systems, trains in Seattle eventually reached the end of their service life. In 2011, Sound Transit partnered with the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife to test a novel idea, creatively reusing retired light rail cars. Taking inspiration from the programs in New York, London, Tokyo, and Sao Paulo, the two agencies decided to deliberately sink three decommissioned carriages to form an artificial reef in Puget Sound near Seattle. Then using a specialized barge, the light rail cars were transported from Seattle out into the protected marine waters of Puget Sound. There, environmental experts helped place the vehicles purposefully upon small patches of seabed. Years later, local sea life to discover these new artificial structures. Within just a few years, the sunken carriages were teeming with vibrant underwater activity. Fish rapidly colonized the artificial habitats, colorful anemones, sponges and coral polyps began transforming parts of the metallic reefscape. Today, over a decade later, the artificial reef crafted from Seattle's retired light rail cars has become a thriving marine ecosystem. It has also become a popular recreational dive site, allowing visitors to experience the artificial coral gardens firsthand. The project stands as an excellent example of sustainable infrastructure reuse in the Pacific Northwest that benefits both the environment and water enthusiasts. Across the border from Seattle lies another major coastal city with an extensive rapid transit system. Vancouver, Canada. For decades, the elevated Skitran network has efficiently transported huge crowds around Greater Vancouver using electric trains. However, Carriages eventually grow old after many years of heavy usage. Beginning in 2009, TransLink, the public transit authority in Vancouver, partnered with marine researchers to test a novel concept. Taking inspiration from the creative programs in other global cities, TransLink decided to deliberately sink retired Skitran cars near Vancouver Island to study their effectiveness as artificial reefs. As with the other transit agencies' projects, TransLink first stripped any potentially hazardous materials from the old trains. Only the bare stainless steel shells remained. Then using specialized vessels, several retired Skitran carriages were transported from Vancouver out to the protected coastal waters around Vancouver Island. There, with guidance from scientists, the cars were carefully placed onto small patches of seabed. It did not take long for local ocean creatures to discover these new underwater structures. Within just a few years, the artificial habitats were teeming with marine life. Fish rapidly colonized the artificial reef networks, finding shelter and foraging opportunities beneath the waves. Colorful anemones, sponges and corals began transforming portions of metallic reefscape. 
ongoing research and monitoring has assessed the artificial reef's development. Today, over a decade later, the sunken Skitran cars have flourished into vibrant ecosystems comparable to natural reefs, with abundant fish and invertebrate populations. The project stands as an excellent example of infrastructure reuse and habitat restoration in Canada's Pacific coastal waters. So, that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel for more fascinating videos like this one, click the video on your screen, it is so amazing.